uh, Jenna Sullivan here and we're going to be making candles today. So there's two different types of candles that you might be interested in making. One is a rolled candle, which we're going to be making today. This is out of beeswax and another would be out of soy wax uh, that we'll make next week. And so making them actual, you know, those like little tins or glass containers that you can actually put a wick in and make your own um, candles that way. So the, again, there are multiple ways of making these. Uh, and so we're going to show you the easiest way. And I'm just going to go over the supplies with you now so that you have them. But here's an example of, of a candle. Now it looks a little bit weird, I know, but it's more for um, you would actually decorate with this. And this is glued on all um, lavender buds. So you guys can see that. So, you know, they come off a little bit, but I'll show you how to make this, but you don't have to do this. You can actually buy candle beeswax in whatever color you want. So I'll show you here. This is candle wick beeswax sheets, and you just order them on Amazon. I like the natural color ones, but they have a ton of different colors, so no big deal. And they come like this. They come in full sheets. Again, so if you're not interested in doing... Uh, beeswax you can use soy wax I don't know if they make soy wax sheets but you can check uh, so that's up to you but this is something that's really cool to have on hand meaning like have a bunch of these on hand with your candle wick and the reason to have this is because let's say you've been invited to a dinner party and you're not quite sure what to bring uh, I mean many people don't drink anymore these days I mean don't get me wrong, I think a lot of people do, but you know, the common house gift to bring for dinner is a bottle of wine, but um, like I don't drink, so it would be kind of counterproductive. So I can bring candles, you know, and it's really cool because you can make two of them and uh, you know, be good to go. So this is what a, a, a full sheet looks like. It's a little bit thick, and so you can cut them in half and, or cut the, you can make whatever size you want. So you can just take this sheet I mean, you could make one this tall and roll it this way, okay? So let's just get started. Uh, basically, the thing is, is with the the hexagon pattern shape here, uh, it's there's one side that always looks a little prettier than the other, so just kind of look at the sides and determine which side you want to use. Now, if you want to do like a longer um, candle or a skinnier candle, so this is based off of this size right so what I'm gonna do is just cut it in half so it's it's not a huge deal you can get a ruler which I don't have one nearby but um, oftentimes I will just use any straight edge possible so for this one I will just use this and you know not the safest thing on the planet but it works and I'm cutting on my granite counters here which doesn't ever mark up so I've got these two sheets here, and you could have measured these and made sure that they were perfect. Uh, that's totally up to you. I think the, the beauty of handmade things is sometimes they're a little bit off, you know, no big deal. But what you want to do then is take, if you want them to taper, so you don't have to, and I mean I've made these in a pinch without, like I just roll them and give them, <laughs> put some ribbon around them and be done. But see how this is tapered? You can actually do that very easily by, again, taking your straight edge and lining it up so that it's going from here to about a half an inch down here. And then you would start rolling at the taller end and roll in and it automatically tapers. So I'm going to do that real quick to so show you how to do that. So again, I'm just taking this and you can make it taper like really crazy, like do it up to an inch. That's totally up to you. And get a blade. I never have any of the right things around in my kitchen, which I should, but just get a normal blade. Now, the cool thing about this little extra, now I hate wasting things. Uh, you can make minis. See this little guy? This is from a top. <laughs> so it's kind of fun because those will, you can do like little tea lights uh, with the excess, all right? So you don't have to um, waste, which is cool. Okay, so here's our basic shape. Now, this is a little bit... Uh, I want to say like it, it can be feel brittle so if it's warm out that's better uh, if it's too cold in your house it might crack a little bit so if you want to warm it up to get it to be a little bit more pliable all you need to do is put a hair dryer on it like just bare, barely you don't want it to melt because you don't want to like 
melt out the cool hexagon sh shape here but you definitely do want to make sure that it's pliable in your hands okay so I'm gonna take my wick and on the longest edge I'm measuring this so it goes from this width the the width of the tallest plus extra okay you can give yourself like a half an inch extra just in case and then what you can do is take this wick you've got flat surface I'm ready to roll okay but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take lavender and I'm just gonna wind this up now in my book essential oil making takes which is coming out tomorrow so look for it I'll be posting about it uh, tomorrow or Sunday just depends on how the proof goes uh, this lavender is um, you could put it in a bowl and like put this in a bowl and drip this on it or just wind it up and drip a few drops on the wick okay so that is a way it's on my fingers now so I'm just making sure this is fully saturated so now this is a fully saturated wick and uh, essential oils have a flash point uh, meaning that they will spark but they this won't cause any problems this is not going to blow up when you when you put the actual when you actually light it so then what you're going to do is you're going to lay this down so that again the wick ends at the base and sticks over by that half to quarter of an inch on the other side so you can see it's longer there okay and then using your fingers and the warmth of your fingers you want to mold this wax over the edge of this wick now the essential oils will be cased in on this wick which is a good thing uh, it's not going to be like it's going to help keep the scent longer as opposed to it you know just dissipating um, because the wax is holding it in and uh, it, you know it doesn't last forever you do know that but just keep working it and I'll kind of show you halfway right now so you can kind of see what it's looking like because I think a lot of you guys see how I'm like literally with my fingers I'm bending it over to encase that wick and it doesn't have to be pretty all right this is something that you you literally are just trying to peel up and over because we don't care about the shape of the actual um, candle wax right now because you're not seeing the inside so as I'm rolling this just make sure you have your correct amount at the top so you could have started at the top if you wanted it doesn't really matter you need to have at least a quarter of an inch at the top so right now my wick is fully encased rolled okay so then I'm gonna turn it this way just so that I can pull it's a little bit easier to to actually like massage so let me move back so you guys can see this to like pull forward and I'm just massaging this and rolling it kind of like I would a carpet so like if I was trying to roll somebody up in a carpet and you wanted it to be even this is what you would do so what I'm doing is I'm watching the left hand side I'm watching the actual base to make sure it doesn't go wonky all right so literally I'm rolling this and helping it stick I'm putting some pressure on this I'm literally pulling it and making sure that it's going in line with the base but I am putting pressure on this because I want it to stick all right it's pretty hard to mess this up <laughs> so as I'm rolling it I'm moving moving forward now this is fairly clear it's not super clear so you could stop at some point meaning you can get to about a couple inches away and do a couple things so depending on what type of wax you get if it's fully not clear I mean this is kind of clear you can take your lavender buds so I've got some lavender buds here and you can actually infuse this with more lavender essential oil because it will actually make it smell stronger and then you can actually take it and sprinkle it in here so I'll show you here what it looks like it's hard to tell maybe you guys can see it it almost looks like there's like little pepper flakes in there so that might be obnoxious to some of you um, but what's really cool is as the candle burns and it's just on the very outside layer as the candle burns as it gets lower 
uh, the wax will actually, those buds will start to kind of float on the top. So it's a kind of an interesting, cool thing to do. They're kind of like hidden pieces in there, uh, but that's up to you if you want to do that or not. So for this one, I'm just going to keep, keep rolling until we're done. When you get to the very end, you're going to take this piece that's right here and you're going to massage it down. You want to make sure your fingers will actually help melt this and it will actually help it stick. But you can see the difference in my taper compared to this one. So the taper on this one was, was only a half a quarter of an inch, I think, and this one was a full, actually a full inch. This was a half an inch. So what we would do here is on both ends, you need to kind of shape it. And again, your hand warmth will help shape it. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing this in to uh, make sure it's stuck together and there's no air pockets in there. And I am shaping this just a little better. We don't want to totally melt it because you don't want it to look like a straight up commercialized candle. We want this to be homemade. But then also the bottom end, you can do the same thing. So I'm sort of tapering the bottom end in so that you can put it into a candle holder. And this is about the right size for a candle holder, about a half a sheet. So you can see that there's a pretty good size, good difference. And again, you can do this as long as you want. You can taper it and melt it together and really get it going. Or you can just leave it so it has that curling look. So, okay, so those are the differences. All right, so this has stuff on it, this doesn't. And so to get this look, which again, some of you won't like, some of you will, everybody does their own thing. Uh, you could either just put ribbon on it. I mean, you could put any number of things around your things. I literally, because I'm lazy, will make this. It has the lavender in it, totally smells delicious. And I'll make two and wrap them with a bow. Okay, so, but just to show you a, another way to do, just take some Elmer's glue, something non-toxic, whatever. This is fabric and paper glue. And if you wanted to do this um, properly, you can actually, if this was a thin enough candle, you could open this up, or if your glue was, was big enough, you could just dip this in to coat it. You can also get messy with your fingers and actually make this, it, it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you want. So you can make patterns on here uh, of anything, but that's why you see some people will use spray glue, which is super, super toxic to your lungs, so I don't recommend that, but they'll actually spray glue it and then put glitter all over it, or you can do whatever you want with it, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So the lavender buds though, what I did with this is put a ton of glue on it, and then in a jar, I have tons of lavender buds, and these I fill up, and with the glue on here, you just dip it in. And it's kind of like you're making a, a dipped whatever, you know? So you wanna get them all off the bottom and then just let it dry. And so a way to kind of base this out, I call it stumping, and you just do this. I want the stump to be nice and flat so that it will stand up, okay? And if it's not, if it's leaning in a certain direction, just make sure you stump it on that side, on the other side, the opposite side, so that it stumps properly. Okay, so it's they'll stand. I mean, they all stand just fine as long as you stump them. <laughs> okay, uh, and also if you have a funky roll, it won't stump. But it's actually a pretty clean roll there, and I've got some lavender buds in there. But that's it, you guys. It's really simple. I love these. I think they're fun to make. Putting lavender in them or not, that's totally up to you. That's a fun thing to do. So anyhow, uh, that's it. And then next week we're going to be doing some cool, uh, some actual uh, soy candles and how you would make those in those little cups, the containers. So I think we're going to do glass. I'm going to do small mason jars for you. And uh, people have asked oftentimes, like, how do I get the wick to not mess up with the like one of them is always burning faster and I can't get it to work properly there's a couple ways with this because there's it, it's airy it has some air in it I've never had any issues with this using straight raw um, wick the other thing though to do would be to get waxed wick so if you find that your wick is burning too fast and the wax is not burning fast enough burning off fast enough you need to use a pre-waxed wick or you can wax it yourself. You just dip it in the melted wax beforehand 
uh, that's something to do but because there's air in these because of the pattern these actually are very nice uh, nice burning candles so I like them and again I, you can look up to see if you're if you're vegan and you want to use a soy based I'm not sure if they if they carry any this is by candle wick I'd have to check into that beeswax sheets uh, but yeah very cool so I hope this was fun for you guys and love it it's super fun very easy to do and inexpensive straight up inexpensive which I like <laughs> okay and remember you can make any size you can cut this to any size the other cool thing and I'll end with this like they give you different things you can do so see how those are shaped you could just they call it a cookie cutter so this is so funny it's like a cookie cutter candle they just say to cut like 12 wax shapes with cutters like cut them out like stars or whatever and then you just sandwich them together and put the wick in the center I mean like, these are so stupid easy like kids could do these there's it's a really fun project okay so watch the replay uh, again if you are in here you're welcome to add anybody to this group but just do know that there's a few group rules so I encourage you to please read the pinned post we don't allow any outside links I saw a couple links in here and so I want to make sure you guys know that we don't allow outbound links simply because of compliance reasons it's not because I'm trying to like you know police you guys uh, I just don't want to get shut down so we do that for um, our own security of our site here all right and you guys will be able to view this on YouTube soon and I'm excited about that uh, we will give you guys the live link for YouTube uh, coming up on Sunday all right take care bye guys